Hey, what's up guys? John here. Breaking news. The Pfizer vaccine was just fully FDA approved. And according to CNBC, the approval is going to clear paths to more mandates. More mandates. So in the last two weeks, we look at how much has happened. New York mandated, San Francisco mandated, LA, New Orleans. This is spreading pretty quickly, right? And whether you're for it or you're against it is irrelevant. What is most important is how does the overall economy change and how is this going to impact us all financially? Because that's what we talk about on this channel is money, personal finance, and business. How does this impact us? Well, the typical small business, their profit margin is roughly 7%. And so if they're in a city that starts requiring these mandates, it's very well likely that they are going to go out of business because the typical margin 7%, that's before them verifying every single customer, which you know they're obviously gonna have to hire additional employees. They're gonna have to build out infrastructure out of their own pocket to facilitate that transaction. So if that does happen, these businesses are pretty much toast. But universities, uh, large corporations, these big conglomerates are gonna thrive and survive because they're gonna gain more and more market share. Now, in this video, I'm gonna break down what we can expect going forward over the next month, two months, three months, because there's gonna be some massive changes in this economy. Please smash that like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube's gonna share the content and educate more people as to what is really going on. So please smash that like button, let's begin. So FDA approval, it says the FDA granted Pfizer BioNTech full USA approval of the vaccine. The more the, the move may encourage more unvaccinated Americans to get the shot as well as give more private businesses across the nation greater confidence in implementing the mandates, which is very likely to happen. Uh, up until now, the mRNA vaccine was on the US market under the emergency use authorization. Again, this is CNBC. And what we're very likely to expect starting next month will be the new round, which will be coming out. So I wonder how these two are gonna be incorporated and how the new mandate is, is it gonna apply just to the first round or to the second round or both? Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna see very, very soon. The Food and Drug Administration on Monday granted full approval of Pfizer BioNTech becoming the first in the US to win the coveted designation and giving even more businesses, schools, universities, greater confidence to adopt the mandates. You know, what's absolutely incredible, my wife's mom is a teacher in LA and she said her classroom, now there's 15 kids that classroom before, you know, ballpark, I think was somewhere between like 23 and 25 kids. They lost 40% of their classroom because they don't want to comply. The parents don't want to comply. So when you look at how massive that number is, we're not hearing about that on the mainstream media. When you look about how massive that number is, you have to realize how many people are going to be changing out of their jobs. How many people are going to be changing careers that are halfway through a college or university that simply don't want to comply. If that is the case, and we have this eviction moratorium in place right now. We have forbearances in place right now. Student loan debt in really the forgiveness in place right now. You know, the moratorium where they don't have to pay is in place right now. What is this going to do? It's going to let people defer the responsibility. And it's, the responsibility is going to fall on the middle class. The middle class landlords that are holding all of these units. So we're setting ourselves up right now for a huge takeover of the middle class. So they go through the data and the statistics that they're presenting to us, but what they're going to see right now is you're going to see more empowerment of local enterprises giving mandates that could, that could be colleges, universities, places of business, whole varieties, and I strongly support that. White House Chief Medical Officer Fauci, August 8th, when asked about the full approval of the vaccine, the time has come, we've got to go the extra step to get people vaccinated. So this is huge. This is absolutely massive because over the last 18 months, it's been like a very gradual uh, like progression towards this. But over the last two, three weeks, it's been much more ambitious. But now what's very likely to happen is we're in mid-August. We're about to step into the winter. The booster is going to become available. What I'm predicting is to come over the next, I would say, six months to a year is that we are gonna extend the eviction moratorium a little bit longer and then a little bit longer and a little bit longer. Small landlords are gonna be in big, big trouble. They're not gonna be able to hold on. I was reading an article in Florida showing that there was over 500,000 units in, um, in Florida 
that are not being paid. The landlords are basically being stiffed. 500, and I think it was 504,000 off memory. So 504,000 units in Florida, these landlords are not getting paid. Now what you're gonna have is not just that situation, that's, that's Florida. So if you start looking at other states, California, New York, you start looking at like Austin, Texas, you start looking at Atlanta and Chicago, all these, all these other states and cities that are gonna start rolling out these mandates, these landlords are gonna be in huge trouble. And you know, we have to remember these landlords, when I say these landlords, I mean Joe the plumber, Sally the nurse, they worked their whole life, they got a little duplex, they rented it out, they became friends with the tenants. The traditional American landlord, what's unfortunate is that the typical debt owed right now to a small landlord is about $3,700. $3,700, and they're saying roughly 11 million. 11 million renters are behind on rent in America. About 1.75 million people are behind on their mortgage payments due to forbearance. But what's very interesting is that when you look at the data and statistics, on the eviction process and the forbearance process in August 2020, they projected 40 million people would lose their homes. So it seems as though that number has been reduced by 75%, 75% and the economy has not yet been fully reopened. So how can that number be true if in fact, you look at a lot of corporations, a lot of employers now offering massive sign-on bonuses. I saw a billboard today driving offering a $10,000 bonus just for taking a job. Now, how can the economy be thriving and things be thriving at that level if they have to offer those types of incentives to get people to work? Now, when we see these numbers, 11 million people behind on rent, I think that number is very low. I think the forbearance number is very low. And I think that what we could very likely see over the coming six months to a year is these numbers balloon as new mandates come and people start really drawing their line in the sand, whether they're for it or against it on where they stand. And I think that this division is gonna be only beneficial for large corporations as people spend more and more money online to evade certain restrictions. So the economy right now, I think, is at a very interesting point. And it's just gonna be something I think that is gonna be a once in a lifetime opportunity. I try to see the best in, the best case scenario for all of us. There really is no good scenario here, but what's the best case scenario? You know, the best case scenario is you come up with a good plan. You try to make as much money as you possibly can. You try to make the best decisions you possibly can with the information that's presently available. If we look at the information that's presently available, we can see that opening up a brick and mortar store right now is probably a bad idea. Taking out a big car loan, probably a bad idea. Buying a rental property, probably a good idea at the right price when all of this risk is then factored in. But right now we look at a lot of these real estate investors going out there buying property now, they're not factoring in that the entire economy is about to change. And they're buying properties based on record breaking numbers, numbers that really don't make any sense. So what I'm saying is we're gonna see a big change and there's no doubt about that. And that change is gonna offer us all opportunity to make money and the question then becomes is what is the best strategy going forward to minimize risk and to provide more safety and security for yourself and your family. And on this channel, I'm gonna talk about just that, what I see coming, what big opportunities are coming. So consider subscribing here, consider smashing the like button and consider subbing on my second channel. I'll leave the links pinned down below in the top comment and I'll see you guys in the next video. YouTube success blueprint. If you've enjoyed this video and want to dive deeper into growing your YouTube channel and create passive income as a YouTuber, check out my YouTube success blueprint by clicking the link in the description below this video. One of the richest men in the world, Warren Buffett, once said, opportunities come in frequently. When it rains gold, put out a bucket, not a thimble. I get the feeling that many men and women today are using thimbles instead of buckets. The truth is that we're in a huge wave of opportunity. I'm not suggesting that the current situation hasn't caused any financial damage to people's lives because it certainly has. You may be one of those who have been fired, transferred, demoted, or had his assets repossessed. When looking up my own channel statistics on Social Blade, you can see that I was able to grow from a mere 11,000 subscribers to 120,000 subscribers in just 15 months. You could do this too, and I wanna show you how. 
My YouTube success blueprint is a complete A to Z guide that teaches you the necessary steps in order to get your channel up and running within a few days. YouTube is an explosive avenue where you could earn thousands of dollars based simply on uploading videos and monetizing them for views. Think of a bridge with a toll on it. That is a video that's monetized on YouTube. It also serves as a great channel to capture leads and potential new clients. Personally, I'm receiving roughly $30,000 per month in video views through Google AdSense just by people watching my videos on YouTube with 120,000 subscribers. This number is likely only going to grow as more and more people become accustomed to using YouTube. We have roughly 2.3 billion monthly users on YouTube, and I could see that number hit 3 billion in no time. To learn more about growing your YouTube channel and creating passive income as a YouTuber, register for my YouTube success blueprint by clicking the link in the description below this video.